you very much, Sister Joyce, and I'm happy that she can share those words. Actually, that's my message today. So even if I don't see anything, you got a message, right? Because it's a wonderful portion of scripture that, that we want to read about, the very, very uh, thought that she brought out in that poem. And so I will like us to bow our heads before we go into this message. Our Father, we praise you this morning. We glorify and honor you, O God, because there is none like you. When the storms of life come our way, we know whom we trust in. When difficulties and challenges arise, we know where our faith is lodged. And we ask you this morning as we look to your word, help us, those of us who are in this church right now, those of us who are viewing online, that Almighty God, our faith in you will arise today to face the challenges of life. And we will never, ever give up. So let your Holy Spirit speak to us today as we look to your word and accomplish that which you please. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. I, I want to entitle this, this message today, Doubting Disciples Discovering Divinity. Doubting Disciples Discovering Divinity. In Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41, we read these words. On the same day when the even was come, Jesus said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent the multitude away, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, and so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Again, I want to say thank you for allowing us the opportunity to come and minister in, in your church. So in a day and age when people feel as, sometimes they feel as though they have no need of God. They become self-sufficient. They can handle situation. We must continue to shine our light. And recognize the importance of fellowship together. Yes. Where we can build our faith and the bond of Jesus Christ. Doubting disciples discovering divinity. It was a night to remember for those disciples. And years later when they would write the scriptures. They listed down the events. So that we can get to understand what took place. And I want us to focus today, especially on the topic, uh, on the subtopic, what manner of man is this? Who do you consider Jesus to be? So there were three things, that, there are three things I want to talk to you about tonight, today. One is it was a night of great danger. And then two, it was a time of great doubt. And three, it was a time of great discoveries for them. Storms sometimes suddenly come on our well-planned lives and change everything. Who would have dreamt that in 2020 something like COVID would arise and all the implications and ramifications after that? The storms of suffering that we now see in our world, the financial needs that people are having, heartbreak, turmoil, affliction, sorrow, the global refugee situations and migrations are in the news every day. The technological developments that, are, that people are striving after and the military might of nations as they strive to see who is the most powerful. 
In our world, the Russia-Ukraine war, and then the Israeli and the, the Palestine conflict over there, the escalation of the coalition and coalition of government and factors and, and, and the trying to define, you know, simple things like trying to define who is a woman or what is a woman. All these things are creating conflict in the minds of people. And when these storms arise in our society, in our family, in our lives, then it leaves us with fear, with anxiety, with pain, leaves us broken, sometimes ruined, grieving, and we are suddenly finding ourselves unable to cope. Where do storms come from, though? Sometimes we bring storms on ourselves. You believe that? Yeah. Our sins and our actions get us into trouble. Sin promises us the best. You know, sin is always well-dressed. Always look nice, feel nice. But soon displays its darker side. And the Bible tells us in Proverbs 14 that sin is a reproach to anyone. And then sometimes storms come from Satan, as in the case of Job. I don't want to go into that story. But we all know what happened, how Job lost everything. Then sometimes God uses storms to disciple us, to discipline us, to bring us back in the right way. In the Israelite community, God used the surrounding nations time and again to discipline them. He used fiery serpents to bite them. Things happen in their lives. And I want you to also note, lest you go away feeling that storms are, you know, storms also come on good people. You believe that? Storms only come on bad people. Storms come on good people. The disciples got into a storm. It wasn't that they were bad. They even had Jesus with them. And lots of people feel that if they got Jesus with them, life is going to be a bed of roses. It doesn't always happen that way. It doesn't always happen that way. Those of us who are Christ and who bear Christ's company must be prepared for a storm and to survive storms. Even with Christ in the boat, storms and doubts and fears will come. The storm was severe. The scripture declare that the storm was now full. The, the ship was now full of water. They had experienced fishermen on board that boat, you know. At least four of them we know were professional fishermen. But they were scared. They were extremely frightened by the severity of the storm. The ship was now rocking and reeling. It was filled, about to sink. I guess they tried all that they could. A small boat in a big storm is a scary place. And the initial fear that they felt isn't wrong. It's what they choose to do with their fear and in their fear that made all the difference. They doubted Jesus' words. Their faith was weak. And let us always remember our reactions to doubt and fear is the all-important factor in life. The way we react to situations, that is what is important. The sea was, can be a very calm and serene place, yet it is the most dangerous and feared place in the world. Thousands of boats and millions of lives have been lost at sea. And the disciples knew that they were in jeopardy. At, at, at the inception, maybe they felt, you know, I, we can handle this. We've been here all, all our lives catching fish. And they may, might have worked hard. And sometimes in our lives, we try, we think we can make it. We think we are equipped. We think we have the experience. We can do this. All their efforts were futile. Have you ever felt that way? That you tried and you tried and you tried and you tried the best way and it didn't work out? So they went to Jesus. And the scripture says, 
they were not only fearful now, they were frustrated that Jesus was sleeping calmly. And so it was not a request actually for Jesus, but it was like a kind of protest. Lord, how can you sleep now, man? We, we are going through a, the most trying time in our lives. His apparent indifference to the situation. And, you know, all of us have gone that way. We need to remind ourselves that no problem is too big for Jesus. In Matthew 14, we read the story of another time when he was going to meet with the disciples. And it was in a stormy situation. And then the scripture says, Jesus came and walked upon the water. And when he stepped into the boat, all was calm and peaceful. Trials and difficulties should propel us towards our Savior. In a script, scripture reading, the disciples run to Jesus, the Bible says. They put down the bucket that they were bailing with. They put down the oars that they were uh, trying with. And they went to Jesus. At least they went to the right person. Many people today in their struggles, they go to the wrong people, to the wrong places for help. Remember that in your difficulties and challenges, Jesus is the answer. Do not look at the circumstances. Look to Jesus. He is able to deliver you. It was a night of great doubts. The cry that, they, that sprang from the heart of the disciples. Master, Master, don't you care? Do you believe that Jesus care? Yes, he does care. He always care. He cares for us. They had seen him conquer devils, diseases, depravity. They had seen him heal the demon possessed. Those with fever and other diseases, leprosy paralyzed. They, they had seen him raise the dead and fed the multitude. They knew and they should have known that he is able and that he cares. When we have doubts in our hearts, doubt withdraws the mind from Christ. We look elsewhere for rescue. It sours the temper. You know, when they went to Jesus, it was almost like they were wanting to rebuke him. And sometimes when we get angry, when we get doubtful, we get angry. Nobody can stay around us. We become bitter and sometimes resentful. It breeds fear. Doubt breeds fear. Lack of trust in God's word. It weakens our faith. We question him. Have you ever questioned God concerning his concern for you, his love for you, his, the way he cares for you. I say, Lord, why are you allowing this to happen to me? You know, I, I've been a Christian for these uh, many, many decades. Why, why is this happening unto me? Just remember that he cares for you. They doubted not only his concern for them, but his commitment to them. You know, when they, when they tried to wake him up, they said, Lord, don't you care that we perish? We're going to die now. But is that what Jesus called them to? Is that what he told them when they got into that boat? No. He said to them, let us go over, not under. Let us go over. They wake him. And when they wake him, it was surprising that in the midst of the storm, he was still asleep. And so they call. And I'm glad to let you know this morning that no matter what the storm is doing outside, your quiet call to Jesus will evoke an answer. We've just been praying about the situation in those islands Carico and Grenada and Barb um, uh, Jamaica and wherever the storm is going. Listen, 
God is in charge. And whatever storm you're going through, God is in charge. Jesus heard their call, heard their cry. He said to them, O ye of little faith. O ye of little faith, why did you doubt? God gave us his promises. And like I said earlier, it's the reaction to the fear of the sea, to the situation that causes them to doubt. He had promised them that they would cross over. And they had failed to take his word, to take him at his word. God's words, the Bible, holds all the promises of life. If we can take the Bible, if we can take God at his word, we can go through life successfully. Through the storms and everything. Then they doubted his power over nature. We perish. We're going to die, Lord. All of us going down. The greatest storm that night was not in the Sea of Galilee, but in the heart of the disciples. That's where the storm was raging the most. It wasn't the wind and the waves. It was in their heart. And they were struggling with doubt and fear. The waves were endangering the boat, but the doubt was causing them to lose faith in God. Christ has shown by his character and his works that he is dependable. He is more than nature. Nature is his creation. He is able to control it. That's why he was able to lift his hand and say, peace be still. Faith changes our perspectives. From fear of, un or of unbelief to godly fear, what manner of man is this? Fearing the storm to worshiping him. His coming is sometimes delayed. But we are struggling in our own efforts and everything else. Sometimes we feel that he's too far away. He's not going to come. He can't help in this situation. Keep looking to him, not to the storm, not to the problems of life, not to the challenges that you face. Whatever you're going through, know that deliverance is at hand. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Trials and difficulties must became, become occasions for us to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. We are to earnestly cry out to God in our helplessness and allow the situation to be opportunities for us to trust in God. When trials become intense, maybe God is preparing us for something greater, something better. It was a night of great discoveries. For the disciples, this was a marvel. This was new. The question in their heart was, Master, don't you care that we perish? And then Jesus just said three words. Peace, be still. May the Lord say, say those words to us this morning. Peace, be still. Whatever you're going through. He's saying that to you today. Peace, be still. Deliverance is here. The wind and the wave see, uh, ceased because he's master of the sea. And then he scolded them. Why are you so afraid? Where is your faith? He said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, how much faith? A little faith. It was a manifestation of divinity. Doubting disciples, discovering divinity. Discovering God in his power, in his glory. The power of the Lord. Great danger needs great power. Great challenges need great faith. And in this case, it was a great danger to the disciples. That's how they felt. 
It was nothing for the Lord because he is the all-powerful one, the omnipotent one. The storm that so terrified these men posed no problem for the Lord. He rebuked the wind and the waves and spoke calmly to the sea and bring calmness. The power of the Lord. They begin to see now. Their eyes were open that they were able to ask themselves, who is this man? Not only the power of the Lord that they witnessed that day in divinity, but the promises of God. As he said, let us pass over, that's what he will do. When he give you a promise, he will bring it true. Heaven and earth shall pass away, the Bible says, but God's word will never pass away. He did not say, let us go under, but he said, let us cross over to the other side. And then, I want you to note a special part of this miracle, the presence of the Lord. You know, when Paul wrote to the Philippians from, from the Roman jail, he said in chapter 4, he said, the peace of God shall be with you. And then he said, if you seek to do his will and walk with him and love him and serve him, he said, the God of peace shall be with you. So he begins by saying, the peace of God will be with you. But if you trust him, if you follow him, then he went on to say, the God of peace now, not the peace of God, but the God himself will be with you. So Jesus was with these men. When the Lord is in your vessel, you have an advantage. He is worth more than his blessings. God is always worth more than his blessings. And with Jesus in the boat, the presence of God was right there. And then... They witness also the purpose of the Lord. He came to earth. He left the glory of heaven, the splendor of heaven, to come down to earth, to declare his power, to declare his promise, to, to show his presence. And now he is declaring the purpose to deliver, to heal, to save, to set free. For the disciples, it was a manifestation of divinity. And they, they couldn't understand. As, as much as they know, they cry out, what manner of man is this? Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? It can only be the Lord, Jehovah, who only has this power and authority. Listen to what Psalms 89, verse 8 and 9 says. O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord. Your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule the raging sea. When waves rise, you still them. Then Isaiah 40 verse 12 says, Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and measure out the heavens with a span? Psalms 46, 93, and 107 speaks of the roaring of the waters, but God's voice above them. And then Psalms 107 tells us, He make the storm a calm place so that its waves are still. What manner of man is this? It's a question for all of us to consider. He is the God-man who stands equal with God on the high level of deity, and equal with man on the low level of humanity. He is both God and man. Today, he is our Lord. We believe that Christ is divine. That's why doubting disciples could have discovered divinity. He is the creator of all things. All things were created for his glory. By his eternal pre-existence, by him all things consist, the Bible says. Psalms 2 verse 7 says, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. When he bring the firstborn into the world, he said, Let all the angels of God worship him. It pleased God that in him should all fullness of the divine attributes dwell. He is before all things, the firstborn of all creation. He is redeemer, reconciler, and head of the church. Christ as the eternal 
word of the, is the perfect image, the visible representation of the unseen God. No man had seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. Jesus Christ, the incarnate Word, in his nature, attributes and actions, is the true epiphany of the unseen deity. He is God in the flesh. Now he is God in the spirit. What are you struggling with today? Do you know why the disciples were saved in that storm? Because Jesus was on board. Do you know what's going to help you in your struggles of life? If you have Jesus on board. The vessel that carried Jesus will never perish. There are many people today who believe that their boats are going down. They are heading downhill. They are sinking. Their problems are too big. Their lives are unfulfilled. Listen, take Christ on board your vessel. It will never sink. You will never fail. Your life will be satisfied. You will succeed. You will be delivered. You will have the victory. The boat could not go down because Jesus was on board. Was there ever a storm with, with the disciples when Jesus was absent? No. Remember that no matter what you're going through, Jesus is right there. And when you, if you feel far away from God, guess who moves? Not him. You. He cares for us. When the Lord is in your vessel, you have that advantage. Great dangers and great fears require great power. And Christ has that power. The power to still the storm that he exhibited that day some 2,000 years ago is the same power that can still every storm in our life today. Every heartache, every turmoil, every affliction, every sorrow. There is no storm on earth that God cannot calm. There is no problem so great that Jesus cannot fix. Bring that storm to him and watch him deal with it. See how he'll straighten your question mark into exclamation mark. See how he will change your why into wow. He cares more for you than you can ever know in Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. He is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. The Lord has already promised that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. I want you to stand with me today. <clears throat> Let every doubting person this morning put away fears and pray, Lord, increase our faith. With Christ in the vessel, in my vessel, I know I can face every storm. Almighty God, we thank you today that we can come before your throne and we bow in your holy presence, acknowledging your greatness, your supremacy, that you alone are God. There is none like you. When it seems that you're not working, you are. When it seems you don't care, you do. Help us this day <clears throat> to put our trust completely in you so that we will know that, Lord, your presence is here with us and all through life, and we can put our faith completely in you to deal with every situation in our lives. We thank you today for your words. And we pray that your words will accomplish that which you please. And bring faith into reality for every one of us. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.